Diatone were a bit late to the three inch ducted Cinewoop market, but I actually think this has worked in their favour. Although this looks similar to the latest crop of popular Cinewoops, there's lots of subtle features that show they've taken their time, taken notice, seen all the problems with ducted quads and fixed them. So what we've got here is a three inch ducted Cinewoop that really works rather well, just as a Cinewoop should. This is the Diatone Taycan, and this is the Whirly Blow Channel. So first, the disclaimer. I'm a bit of a Diatone fanboy. A few years ago, the GT200 really did kickstart great ready-to-fly quads. Diatone have always had a very distinctive approach to style, packaging and quality. Sure, there's been a few duds along the way, but they're mostly awesome. Particularly the R349 and its variants were all fantastic. Although it's clear they don't put the same effort and money into packaging any longer. But that's no big deal, because it will have eaten into their production costs. But they always pay attention to detail, and that's what counts. You'll always get a bag of usefully labelled extras, all the wires and so on, and I remember on the GT200, it came with every single cable and wire you'd ever need, all nicely labelled up. And this Taycan is pretty much the same. You get the usual quality battery straps, cables, tie wraps and so on. You get this micro buzzer on a PCB and a 90 degree USB adapter to make it easier to plug down between the ducts here. Remember though, this is USB-C on the top. Yeah, other quads do that, but it's the little things like the receiver cable labeled up for RXSR. Very nice. You get this extender that plugs into the plug down there, and they even supply a separate cable if you need to solder onto something like an XM Plus and they provide all these little cards showing you where you need to connect that up to. And one thing, I really do wish that Diatone made these buzzer PCBs available separately. Whenever I do a review of a Diatone quad, I get asked, where did you get that buzzer? And I can't tell them. Maybe I should start making them. As you'll see in the setup, all these subtle things make getting this ready to fly is incredibly easy and very quick. So if we take a closer look at the quad itself, it follows the same approach iFlight and others have used and they've not used PLA or TPU 3D printed ducts. These are injection molded, just like the Bumblebee. Although I still worry the profile isn't great and should be more ducted fan-like to get the extra thrust. These are more like prop protectors or bumpers, if you like. I'll pull this part in a minute so you can get a proper look at how the ducts are held in place. It's basically just using an upper lower carbon plate bolted to standoffs here to give it the stiffness with this foam bumper around the outside. The subtle difference is they use separate upper and lower centre frame plates here and here. And this makes getting the electronics and the camera accessibility really easy because you don't have to take the duct frames off. It's only a few screws to get inside. Anyway, the carbon they've used is really nice quality and very well finished. There's even neat CNC branding on here, diatome there, and Taycan underneath. There's no rough edges and this CNCing here isn't so deep that it's going to make the frame or any of these plates susceptible to cracking. They've also beautifully recessed the bolt holes everywhere that it's needed. The top plate is 2mm and the bottom plate and the duct plates here, they're all 2.5mm. And sorry, also it looks like this single bottom plate works for all the variants Diatone offer for this the 4S, the 6S, and you get the analog or the DJI air unit version. And I ordered this 6S with the Runcam Nano 2 on the front, 
and I think this and the 4S version are probably going to be more popular than the DJI Air unit, mainly because it's just so much cheaper. Up front there's a cast aluminium camera protector and mount. This is going to be strong, but importantly it's a solid mount for the Runcam CMOS camera. CMOS cameras really don't work well on flexible mounts because it amplifies their rolling shutter characteristic and that just ends up as jello in your goggle views or on your DVR footage. At the back is a TPU bracket 3D printed and this holds the VTX antenna as well as the receiver wires which go in there and it's cleverly designed because it will also hold a TBS Crossfire Immortal antenna and they supply a Fox Ear Lollipop VTX antenna. I've used loads of these, they're great. They're not too big, very robust and they've actually got a gain of 2.5 dBi. And the ducts are really strong, injection molded and have been very well thought out. If you look down here where there's a cutout for not just the frame but for the wires so nothing's going to chafe and break. It's very clever. The motors, they're Mamba Racing MB1408 2800kV motors for this 6S version and the 4S one comes with 4000kV versions. And the props are Gemfan 75 Cinewoop and these got a 4 inch pitch and they're not too noisy. And this is a really good and reliable combination. The flight stack is the tried and trusted Mamba F405 Mini, buried down in here. With the Forest version you get the Mamba F25 25 amp 4-in-1 ESC and with this 6S version you get the 35 amp version of that. And buried down in there, which you can't quite see, is the Mamba TX400 400 milliwatt VTX. You don't get a receiver as part of this package, but it's just so easy to fit. So let's get this apart and get it all wired up. When you take this top plate off, be careful not to lose these four plastic washers between the top plate and the middle standoffs. They're there to hold the center plate away from the duct plates. And these four center bolts are actually longer than the four on the outside. Before you add a receiver, it's easier to create a new model on the transmitter and bind the receiver now, while it's all apart and it's easy to get to. I'll leave links in the description for my detailed videos on the best way to do this. If you're using an FR Sky RXSR, there's nothing to solder. Plug the supplied and labelled extension cable onto the board and simply plug it into the receiver and carefully feed the antennas through the rear TPU bracket. And add the antenna tubes if you want them. If you're using something like an XM Plus that needs soldering, Diatone provide a suitable cable with a connector and then you can just plug it in. You can fix the receiver down with double sided tape or zip ties. To be honest there's enough room on here just leave it floating around. Then you can plug the buzzer PCB into the flight controller board. And fix it down with some double sided tape and screw the top plate back on. Dead easy. <laughs> and this will take about five minutes even on a bad day. Now you will need full battery power to set this up completely. The flight controller won't power the receiver from USB on its own. Remember to check there's no shorts across the quad connector before you connect a battery. Although I really recommend you use a variable bench power supply instead of a battery. I've linked a detailed video on how to do this in the description. Also, take the props off and screw the VTX antenna on, 
because the VTX will be powered up and the output stages will get fried if there's no antenna loading it. Okay, so that's all the health warnings over. Let's get this set up in Betaflight. We can connect to the quad. And yes, my quad is at a jaunty angle. I'll explain that in a minute. So look at the ports. Oh, yes, we're running Betaflight 4.1.2 with the Amber F405 target. So we're on a pretty recent version of Betaflight 4.1. Uh, that is the USB UART. UART 1 is being used for SBUS, Serial RX. UART 2 is free and unused. UART 3 is being used for power and channel switching on the VTX using IRC tramp protocol. And UARTs 4, 5 and 6 are all free. So you could use those for anything that you want. GPS maybe. Configuration. So we have got props in. D-Shot 600 set for the ESC protocol. Bidirectional D-Shot is turned off, so there's no RPM filtering. Actually, I think it's a good thing on this quad. I'll talk about that a bit later. What else do we have? All fairly standard. The arming angle is now 180 by default on beta flight, which is sensible. Receiver's all set up for SBUS. And permanent air mode is turned off, which is the way I prefer to do things. I like to have that on a switch. I don't think those would normally be enabled by default. That's the D-Shot beacon for RX Lost and Set. It just tweaks the motors to make it sound like a buzzer. Okay, all looks good. Parent battery, nothing unusual here, although I will calibrate the voltage a bit later using these meter settings down here. Fail safe. Yep, that's set to drop, which is perfect. Pid tuning. This is the interesting one. So let's see what diatone have set for us. And this looks to be completely standard beta flight 4.1 pids. Let's have a look and see if it's on profile one. Yeah, profile two. Profile 3. Yeah, that all looks completely standard to me. Rate profiles, I've already added my rates in. The standard rate that Diatone have set are these, which look to be beta flight defaults. I have been in already and set my rates, which suit my style of flying and my stick movements. I like quite a lot of Expo and I like my super rate a bit on the high side. It just suits my style of flying. Let's check the filters. And this looks all pretty stock to me. Yes, I think so. Not convinced those are the stock numbers though for low pass one, but we can check that later. Anyway, regardless, this looks to be almost spot on beta flight 4.1 defaults. Receiver. I won't bother setting this up now because we will need uh, full power connecting to the quad to set that up. Modes, I have set these already. I've got an arm switch, another switch for flight mode. We've got angle, horizon. Don't know why I set horizon. I haven't used it for years. It's just a habit, I guess. Beeper set up. I've got air mode on a switch because I like to turn that off when I'm landing so it doesn't bounce around all over the place. And we've got total mode, flip over after crash. Excellent. Anything else on here? Yes, I know, I'm low battery. OSD, I've just laid this out to how I like it. I don't like too cluttered a screen. I haven't put the RSSI up here because we're using FR Sky RXSR, which has got telemetry back to my transmitter. So I don't really need it on the OSD because my transmitter talks to me when we're on low RSSI. That's good. So nothing else to report, really. I think that's all we need to do. And that is ready to go out in the field and do our first test flight. So this is ready to fly now. Do remember to check everything is tightened up, particularly the motor bolts. And check the props are the right way around. Okay, so that's all buttoned up. We need to get it out in the field for a line of sight test. Quick check around, all looks good. Yes, it is noisy. But that's similar to so many other semi loops these days. We're looking good. Keep it nice and close. Don't want to go too far on the first flight. A little 
little bit of a punch out there. Whoa, that is a nasty little your washout wobble there. But that's not unusual to be expected from a ducted sunny whoop to be honest. Quick fly around. Let's bring it back and just check how those motors are doing and see whether they're hot. Blown about in the wind a bit here. Nice and cool. Good. Since I reviewed the iFlight Bumblebee recently, I guess the big question is, which of these two is best? Now, much as I love iFlight products, the Diatone Taycan is better. It does what a Cinewhoop is supposed to do. It's fantastic at flying smoothly and slowly, which is perfect for capturing cinematic video footage in and around people and flying through those small gaps, windows and so on. And unusually, this is really easy to control in acro mode when you're flying slowly or even hovering. Acro is normally best when you've got plenty of forward speed. And if you want to fly slowly around exploring, angle is probably best. There's less drifting and wandering. But the Taycan can just be left in acro. The problem with the Bumblebee is they sort of tried a little bit too hard with their factory RPM filter settings and tune to try and make it fly acro manoeuvres. But they've sort of made it worse. They both suffer from your washout and wobble with the simplest of tricks, but the Bumblebee is pretty poor. The Taycan will at least do some light acro, unlike the Bumblebee, which is all over the place. This will do power loops of sorts, but should you really be using a ducted cine whoop for this? No, not really. Just use a good three, four or five inch acro quad for that. And I think Diatone have done the right thing to leave the default beta flight 4.1 settings with a couple of small tweaks. It's really worked in their favor to make it do what a cine whoop should do. Now, the other big problem with cine whoops is hot motors. And the great news is the Taycan motors on this tune are barely warm, regardless of using four or six S LiPos. Now, I put this down to keeping to the stock 4.1 tune and having a very stiff frame. Now, this doesn't come with an HD camera mount for any sort of camera. I've been using this GoPro Hero 7 on a TPU mount, and I'll leave a link in the description where you can get that. This is 25 degrees, but I think for slower flying, I'd really go for a 15 or maybe 20 degree version. Now, I've never been a huge fan of the Runcam Nano 2. I think the Foxeer Predator Nano 4 is the best nano size FPV camera at the moment. I find the colors on the Runcam, they just don't look natural, and the default settings have got too much contrast for me. But, this is a personal thing, because I know loads of people do like the Runcam. But I don't really understand why Diatone have gone for a nano size camera anyway. There's plenty of room in here for a 90mm one. So I'll be swapping this out for a Cadax Retail very soon. A couple of other small issues for me, and they are pretty small. There's no landing feet, so the bottom of the quad will get scuzzed up fairly quickly. You could easily put a couple of foam pads on here, but I think Diatone should have included something. Also, and this really is nitpicking, the USB 90 degree adapter that goes in here is USB-C. Now, that's not a problem, but because of the way the micro USB connector is fixed to the adapter, you have to have it poking out of the bottom. And that's quite annoying when you're trying to set up beta flight. Calibrating the accelerometer, it needs to be on a flat surface, and the adapter and the cable, they just get in the way. Now, this is designed to run on 6S, and as you'll see from the DVR goggle footage, I've flown it on 4S and 6S. It somehow feels more manageable on 4S, although you will get longer flight times on 6S. But if you want more punch, you can plug a 6S in, and you've just got that better performance. 
I've been using AC 1300 mAh 4S and some GMB 1050 mAh 6S. You'll get four to five minutes of flight time on these depending how you fly of course. Now weight wise this comes in at just over 300 grams or 420 grams if you've got a GoPro Hero 7 on it. It's not the lightest but it's around the same weight as a Bumblebee and a Mega Bee. Now, if you saw my other video about how loud Cine Whoops have got recently, you'll know this is loud. Not quite as loud and screechy as the Bumblebee, but it's still pretty loud. Now, I think this is definitely the best of the current bunch of plug and play Cine Whoops, if you want to capture slow flow cinematic footage. And after all, that's what Cine Whoops were designed for. It does fly very smoothly and the HD footage I'll leave at the end is straight off the Hero 7. There's no real steady stabilization nonsense. And it's really easy to fly like this if you just add a bit of RC Expo and keep your stick movements small and precise. This is fantastic build quality and I really can't criticize any of the component choices. This 6S analog FPV version is priced at around £170 or $200, which is great value, and the 4S1 is fractionally cheaper. There's a DJI Air Unit version, which is more expensive. And I'll leave links in the description so you can check the latest prices. I'd really recommend the 6S version because it gives you the option to fly on 4 or 6S. And this is much cheaper than the rather pricey Bumblebee. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please do the subscribey belly thing up here when it appears to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time, and enjoy the HD footage. To play your own game Cover it up Don't let them know what you're thinking I bet you never tell them how it feels I bet you never even try to be real You won't go full of me twice now, baby I'm sorry Let it go